Welcome back to Passe Empowerment. I'm Lidu. And I'm Kima. And we're the co founders of Little Steam. Lidu and I went to the Baltimore Aquarium and had so much fun. Yes, it was very fun, Kima. The cool part is we have a bunch of footage and information for you all to see from our time at the Baltimore National Aquarium. You'll be seeing our journey throughout exploring the deep marine biology. So get ready to explore! Lee Du, do you know what marine biology is? Yep, I do, Kima. It's the study of living things in big bodies of water. So things like oceans, lakes, rivers, things like that. Lee Du, I like the ocean, but how do I know if something's a living thing? That's a great question, Kima. Living things are things that can move, grow, and change. Living things also need air, water, and food to live. We call living things biotic factors in science. What are some examples of biotic factors? Well, animals, plants, and insects are some things that are considered biotic factors. Uh, what are things called if they're not living? In science, we call things that are not living abiotic factors. What are examples of abiotic factors, Lidu? Well, water, sunlight, soil, and rocks are things that are considered abiotic factors. Um, if you're watching this video right now, how about you think about some things that are considered abiotic factors? So why are biotic and abiotic factors important? That's a great question, Kima. Biotic and abiotic factors are important because they both have important roles in an ecosystem. I know what an ecosystem is. It's abiotic and biotic factors living together in an environment. That's right, Kima. Well, going back to why abiotic and biotic factors are important. Well, plants, which are biotic factors, need soil, which is an abiotic factor to grow. There are many relationships between biotic and abiotic factors out there, so we can think about more if we wanted. Basically, abiotic and biotic factors have different roles in our environment. Well, Lidu, what are we talking about today? Today, we're going to talk about marine biology. And marine biology just means the study of living things in water. Ah, now I understand what marine biology is. Kima. Remember how I said plants are living things? Since we were talking about marine biology today, the study of living things in the water, why don't we talk about marine ecology? What's that? Marine ecology is the study of a marine organism's habitat and the interactions among organisms within their living and non-living environment. Huh? Basically, studying abiotic factors and biotic factors in a marine environment, aka water. Ah, that sort of makes sense. Do we have examples so I can understand a bit more? Yep, here's an example of a marine environment from our trip to the aquarium. As you can see here, there are trees, which are living things. In a real rainforest, there would be animals in the water. So that brown stuff you see over there are called coral reefs. Some marine animals need coral reefs so that they can use it as their habitat or home. This is also a great example of marine ecology. As you can see here, those two fishes are swimming in water surrounded by abiotic factors, like rocks. Ooh, we saw sharks! And that, my friends, is a shark. Shark you know what that means. Girl, not this again.
about marine mammalogy. Mamma what? <laughs> well, let me explain what mammals are first. What are they, Kima? Mm -hmm. Mammals are animals that have a spine and produce milk. Oh, so we're going to talk about mammals in the water. Yep, let's show some mammals from the aquarium. Yay. A dolphin is a mammal. Dolphin moms produce milk for their dolphin babies. We saw some dolphins when we went to the aquarium. Sadly, they were asleep. But here are some pigs. Also learned that during the day, one of their halves of their brain is sleeping, and the other half is during nighttime sleep. So they can never stop. That's why they do that to keep them alive. Um, they get fed a whole bunch of food. I'm pretty sure he said they get fed 24 pounds of fish a day each. So that's a lot, but they do that around training. So that's probably why they do that, because they're exercising while they're eating. This is really cool stuff, Kima. Let's just talk about one more thing. Marine invertebrate zoology. Yo. Marine invertebrate zoology is the study of invertebrates, the lacking of the spine, in a marine environment. Kima, we keep talking about spines and our viewers are probably confused. Let's show everyone a picture of a spine and explain what it is. Spines are a major part of our body. They hold everything up and together. If something happens to your spine, you're going to be really hurt. Some animals that fall under this area are jellyfish, sponges, worms, and starfish. We have footage of some of those from the aquarium. I bet you guys know what jellyfish do. They sting. But they why do jellyfish sting? The fins. A little bit, but it's got another really important question. To eat. To eat. It catches their food. This kind of jellyfish eats microscopic little stuff. And they have such small stingers that we don't even feel it through our skin. So this jellyfish, even if you tried, if it tried to sting you, you wouldn't feel that sting. We've got an Atlantic stingray. She does, in fact, have a barb, and she's still got it. But the thing about Atlantic stingrays, and most stingrays in general, a pretty good rule of thumb is that their barb is only going to be about as big as the distance between their eyes. So for an Atlantic stingray, their barbs are very, very small. There's never been any recorded fatality of an Atlantic stingray and a human. I love marine biology. It's so cool and interesting. Did you know 80% of the ocean is unexplored, so there's probably so many animals we don't know anything about? Wow, Kima, that's a crazy fun fact. Maybe someday in the future, our viewers can be the ones that discover animals in the water. That's why I think it's very important that we all keep exploring. Sure is, you baby shark. Stop being annoying, you're just jealous. Amir, be quiet. She has to get used to it. <laughs>